opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of WPDE ABC 15, WWMB CW 21, or its employees. You're watching Carolina and Company Live, your source for fun, entertainment, and events. With your host, Cecil Chandler and Amanda Sellers. If it's happening in the area, it's on Carolina and Company Live. And hello, everybody. Welcome to Carolina and Company Live. It's a Wednesday, the middle of the week, and this show has a lot to offer today. I tell you, you're going to learn something if you just watch. And don't forget, tell a friend about this show, at least one person, and they can pass it on because if you live in the area and you want to know what's going on, the Grand Strand, anywhere around, we're going to tell you about it. But first off, let's check out the weather. High pressure firmly in control across the region. A live look right now out in North Myrtle Beach. A couple of people out on the beach by far more than earlier this morning. We were in the 40s this morning in the middle of May, mind you. And so, of course, not a lot of people at the beach with temperatures in the 40s. And now we're starting to see the emergence of a few 70s out there. 70 degrees in Sumter, King Street, 65 Myrtle Beach, 68 there in Georgetown and a lot of mid 60s across the border belt and PD. Rightfully so, our dew points are still low. We're dealing with those dew points in the 40s. This morning, it actually felt just downright beautiful, feeling more so like a winter's morning than a summer's morning. Again, those low dew points all due to that ridge of high pressure, which is also keeping our skies clear. But this ridge will slide off the coastline and we'll talk about the impacts that that will have for our region in just a little bit. What you can see is the dry air still fully in control, so we are dealing with sunny skies. But by this afternoon, some mostly sunny skies will begin to develop as this lingering feature. You see all this milky white cirrus clouds, a few uh, stratocumulus uh, embedded in that little wave feature. That's actually yesterday's severe thunderstorm threat over Illinois, Iowa, and Missouri. Now, while the rain has totally fallen apart due to that ridge of high pressure, the clouds have not. And so we are going to notice sunny skies throughout the rest of the afternoon. But by 4 to 6 o'clock, mostly sunny skies inland and Grand Strand by 6 to 8 o'clock. Again, the cirrus clouds, those are the wispy ones in the upper levels. And the cumulus, the big puffy white ones, are the type of clouds that we'd expect with this. No rainfall will come of it, and that's the good news. The high will continue to dictate our weather pattern through the end of the week. It slides off our coastline by Friday, and that means a southerly wind. Grab that Atlantic moisture, throw it right on shore. That means our dew points are heading on up. So are our temperatures, the combination of both leading to heat indice values. 90 on Friday inland, 94 for a heat index on Saturday, and 92 on our Sunday. For Grand Strand coastal locations, if you are headed to the beach, good weekend to do it. Low to mid 80s there, but it's the mid to upper 80s when it comes to the feels like temperature. If you're dealing with the Blue Crab Festival, headed out there, Little River, looking great. Sunny skies at 9 a.m. We are going to notice some mostly sunny skies in the afternoon on Saturday. More sun than clouds on our Sunday. Both the days temperatures in the mid 80s. Our 10 day forecast continuing to show not a drop of rain for the Carolinas over the next 10 days. As this ridge exits, another ridge builds in and that's going to bake much of the southeast heading into next week. Temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, even some low to mid 90s inland. All right. Thanks a lot, Zach. We appreciate the weather forecast. Looks like some good days ahead. All right. We're going to talk about what's coming up today. Let's check out the lineup for today's show. Now, we're talking about starting off with the, Holly the Hollywood Minute comes up. And, of course, today we're going to talk about uh, the, the uh, video of the There we go. Video of the day. The celebrities' birthdays. You never know who's going to have a birthday for celebrities. We're going to tell you all about it. Today's guest, we're going to talk about our financial expert. He's here. And we've got a satellite interview that's going to be very interesting to you. And Sonny's here from the Highway Patrol to talk about traffic, motorcycles, and a little bit of everything. All that's coming up right after Hollywood Minute.
There are many who prey on the innocent. I'm sure your kind would agree. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were making a threat. Well, do you? Do I what? No better. Here's your first look at Angelina Jolie, along with Elle Fanning and Michelle Pfeiffer in Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. The sequel to the 2014 hit Maleficent opens in theaters October 18th. We was together all the time. We were like peas and carrots, Jenny and I. Run, Forrest! Paramount is celebrating the 25th anniversary of Forrest Gump by releasing a two-disc Blu-ray package loaded with extras, putting the Oscar-winning movie back in U.S. theaters June 23rd and 25th, and holding a free outdoor screening in Washington, D.C. on the National Mall May 24th. Do you mind signing this copy? I am 84 years old and everyone wants to take a picture with me. <laughs> Notorious RBG. MTV loves RBG. The Ruth Bader Ginsburg documentary has four nominations for this year's MTV Movie and TV Awards, including the new Real Life Hero category. Avengers Endgame is also up for four awards, as is the final season of Game of Thrones. Zachary Levi earned two nods for his role in Shazam, and he'll also host the award show June 17th in Santa Monica, California. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, a lot of great nominations here, too. All right, here we go. I want to talk about something now. This is a work by famed Impressionist painter Claude Monet. Now. He's got a picture. Listen to this. Sold for big bucks at auction this week. This is the painting in question. It's called Mulis or Gain Stacks and was completed in 1890. And it sold Tuesday night to an anonymous buyer for more than $110 million. That's double pre-auction estimates. And uh, they handle the sale. But this is most every, uh, let's see, I'm sorry. It says the most ever for an impressionist painter and the ninth most expensive ever sold an auction. And as it turns out, it's not the only painting Monique made. In fact, he painted a total of 25 of them near his home in France, eight including the one sold Tuesday are in private hands, while the rest are in museums. $110 million for that? Why did I start painting instead of getting into television? Wow. I could just do one painting and that's all I would need. All right, let's find out a little bit about today. Today is uh, Wednesday, May 15th, and this is Nylon Stockings Day, and it's also Dinosaur Day. All right, in 1953, let's check out birthdays today. Uh, George Brett, he's 66 years old, the Hall of Famer, Kansas City Royals third baseman, 13-time All-Star, three-time American League batting champ. 1969, Emmett Smith, 50 years old, cowboy running back, retired with NFL rushing record, 18,355 yards. He played eight Pro Bowls and three Super Bowls. 1975, let's look at Ray Lewis. We're talking about sports guys today. 44 years old, legendary Baltimore Ravens linebacker, Super Bowl 15, named MVP. In his 17-year career, over 2,000 tackles. All right, today in history, let's talk about Sonny and Cher. Uh, they received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame back in 1998. And in 2014, the National, uh, the National September 11th Memorial Museum was de dedicated in New York. All right, from the Know-It-All Department today, here we go. Costa Rica in 2012 became the first Latin American country to ban hunting as a sport. So if you're going to Costa Rica, you cannot do any hunting. There's always something going on somewhere. And that's the way it is right there from the know-it-all department. We got a great show lined up. Sit back, relax, because we're coming right at you. And welcome back. Our financial expert, David Stacey, is with us. Now, we've been talking about reverse mortgage, a lot of different things going on. Now, today, we talked about uh, qualifying for reverse mortgage, and this is with your credit rating. Now, we're going to find out about credit rating. It is, Cecil. Um, um, back to the qualifying step, you know, I told you we talked about income last week, and this week I want to talk a little bit about your credit rating. A lot of people, when they get older, they're living on a fixed income, they get behind on a couple of bills, and it just seems to mushroom on them. They never can get caught back up, and their credit rating goes down. They know they've got, cre they've, they know they got bad credit, and they just feel like, well, you know, I, I know I couldn't get approved for a loan because, let's face it, you know, you yeah. always, when you go out to get a loan in life, people do look at your credit rating. 
On a reverse mortgage, it's different. What we look at is the last two to three years and how your bills have been managed over the last two to three years. And if, if you have had some slow payments, and, and you still qualify from an, from an asset standpoint, in other words, you've still got plenty of equity in your home, don't worry about your credit. Let us take a look at it first, because one of the features of the loan program, we don't deny you on bad credit. Okay, only if you're in the middle of bankruptcy would we tell you that you've got to come out of bankruptcy before you can do it. But you can have terrible credit. You can have a 500 credit score, for instance, and still may qualify for the reverse mortgage. All we're going to simply require is instead of making all those funds available to you, yeah. we put some funds aside and pay your taxes and your homeowner's insurance for you. And, and that's, that's really the only, the only stipulation. So the, um, I talked to a gentleman the other day, and he said, man, I got terrible credit. I don't think I'll qualify because my credit's too bad. And I said, no, sir. All we're going to require is that we hold back some of the funds to pay your taxes and your insurance for you. You might even, even if you had perfect credit, some people have looked at that and said, boy, if I take this reverse mortgage out, I can use the, the proceeds of the loan. I don't owe anything on my home. I could just use the proceeds from the loan yearly to pay my taxes, my insurance, and maybe, maybe make any improvements to the house that I want to make. Do whatever you want to do. And just then, use the money. And the home then simply really does pay for itself that way. You don't, you don't have any expenses at all associated with it. And that's what a couple people have used the program for. So there's many ways. Don't think for a second that just because you're behind on your bills that you don't qualify for a reverse mortgage. Don't, that's a, that's yeah. amazing. Let somebody listen, look at yeah. it first and tell you. You know, there's a few times that we have to tell people, no, we just can't get you. Just don't fit the mold. But not, it doesn't happen very often. It truly doesn't. Well, I tell you, reverse mortgage is a great thing to help people with retirement, extra money incoming, and takes care of everything. That, tell them where you live, David. I'm up in Longs, actually, but I travel all over the state, and I'm, I meet with folks anywhere. Uh, uh, a lot of it is simply about education. What I try to do is educate people, make sure they understand the program completely before they ever make a decision moving forward. It's not for everybody, but, you know, it's a good program for a lot of people out there, and a lot of people simply don't, don't understand it. That's right. Thanks, David. Check Thank his you, website Cecil. out. You can find all about reverse mortgage and how you can get involved in that. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, ALS is a devastating incurable disease that gradually takes away the ability to walk, dress, speak, swallow, and eat. Most people with ALS will die within two to five years of diagnosis. Art can be a powerful tool in helping people process their emotions and experiences. May is also ALS Awareness Month. And here to explain are Erica and Tess. How you doing, ladies? Good, Hi. how are you? Doing great. All right, Erica, how does art help people with emotionally challenging situations like having maybe a parent that's terminally ill? Art can be a powerful tool, especially for teenagers. Um, teenage years tend to be a little more challenging, um, and teens may already be feeling vulnerable, let alone having to deal with an illness such as ALS. Um, so art offers the ability to maybe express yourself in ways you would not be able to verbally express yourself, um, and really gives um, teens and young adults an opportunity to tell their story. All right, Tess, how do you use art to help you deal with your dad's illness? So I was a freshman in college when my father was diagnosed with ALS, and I was studying film at the time, and my best friend and I followed him around with a camera for two summers, and it now is just a wonderful way for me to look back and remember time that moved really, really fast. All right, so Erica, tell us about this effort to help young people who have been impacted by ALS. So Also Us empowers young people impacted by ALS to share their stories through art. Um, so um, young people can go on our website, alsousart.com. They can submit their original artwork. Uh, they may also have an opportunity to pair with a creative expert uh, to tell their story. And we're really excited to be partnered with Mitsubishi Tanabe Pharma America on this project. Right, what are some of the problems that young people face when a family member has ALS? Well, in my experience, um, I was only 18 at the time, and I 
found that the the traditional parent daughter roles really became reversed because I was forced to step up to the plate in ways that I never would have imagined. I my dad, for instance, was the the designated family driver, and um, you know me having to drive him around, he he felt more unsafe than than ever. Um, but you know everyone everyone has to step up. All right, so how can people in, get involved in also us? Well, people <laughs> can visit alsousart.com and stay tuned for some amazing artwork by young adults and teens who have been impacted by ALS. All right, thank you guys for being with us today. We really appreciate it. More Carolina and Company Live coming up in just a minute. And welcome back to Carolina and Company Live. All right, right now along the Grand Strand, if you live here, you're seeing a lot of motorcycles. I'm talking about the motorcycles coming here for, you know, for the rest of the week. And uh, we've got Corporal Sonny Collins with us now to talk about what's going on and how they're dealing with all of this traffic and everything. <laughs> you know, the spring means a lot of things, but for us here at the beach, it means motorcycles. And uh, certainly that's, that's kicking in gear. Last weekend was the first weekend of the Harley Rally. But this weekend is the big weekend. It's the weekend that everybody really looks forward to. So we know a lot of traffic's gonna start coming into Horry County, really starting tomorrow, Friday, and then the peak of it will be on Saturday. So if you're a resident here, a local, you got some running around to do, uh, today and tomorrow might be those days. And do it early, because late do, in the afternoon, they always like to ride. The later in the day, they seem to get out and ride more. And you know, this rally really goes from Georgetown County, Merle's Inlet, all the way to North Myrtle Beach. So uh, the entire Grand Strand's encompassed by this, but we want everybody to be safe. Uh, we had 26 motorcycle crashes last year during the rally. We've had three already this year with one fatality. Uh, most of the crashes though are riders driving too fast, maybe not quite as experienced, and they get out here in these heavy traffic areas. So we need our riders to do their part, but we, you and I, as we drive, yeah. we have to do our part. Uh, check your blind spots, don't pull out without double looking at the motorcycle. So little things can help. All right, now down in Georgetown, around where all the places are, where all the mm -hmm. motorcycles go, y'all have patrolmen down there all the time right now. We do. They started last weekend down uh, Merle's Inlet. Uh, there's several bars right there on the 17 business. Yeah. So we have troopers that will be there all day and into the evening until those bars start closing down. And it's simply to help pedestrians, motorcycles get in and out of those parking lots because not only do we have all those motorcycles and people, but just regular car traffic that would be going through there on any normal day. So uh, those troopers are going to help those uh, those people and those motorcycles get in and out of those uh, parking lots. And, uh, you know, the locals, they're going down, they're trying to get out of that, so they're going further down into Merle's in it, mm -hmm. you know, like Russell's Raw Barn places down in there, because they don't want to be in the middle of all those motorcycles. It's, it's a busy time. It's a busy time. And with this rally going literally from one end of the coast to the other end of the coast, the county both encompassing Georgetown, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a big thing, but uh, we do have a lot of troopers that will be coming in town from outside to help us, and we work with all our other agencies. So uh, if we all work together, we can get through this, and hopefully everybody that comes down has a good time, get them home safe. That's right. I've seen a lot of guys out on the motorcycles, Eli and a bunch of the other local yes. guys that work in this yes. area too. So the advice to everybody watching right now is what, Sonny? If you're a rider, motorcycle yeah. rider, uh, be prepared. Wear your protective gear. Ride within your, your limits. Uh, the biggest thing we see are speeding motorcycles. Uh, the driver's probably driving a little faster than their experience is going to let them. Uh, they have a problem and they run off the road and, and crash. And for us as drivers, look twice before you pull out. Look twice before you make lane changes. Motorcycles are small. Can't hardly see them. The speed, it's hard to judge a speed. You see that single headlight coming. So uh, look twice. And uh, I think if we do that, riders do their part, then we can get out of here just, just safe. Well, I hope we have a safe from now on. We've had how many this year? Three. Uh, We've had three crashes with yeah, one, fatality. one fatality. We had 26 crashes last wow. year with one fatality. So uh, hopefully we stay well under that 26 number this year. That sounds good. Sonny, I appreciate you being here. I know y'all got a lot of work to do down here. So everybody listen to what he says. Look out for the motorcycles, uh, motorists and motorcycle people. Look out for everybody and be careful. We'll do. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Sonny. I appreciate it. All right, we got more coming up right here on Carolina and Company Live. We'll be right back. It's funny, it's crazy, and you never know what Cecil or Amanda are going to say or do. Chewing gum burns about 11 calories It's per hour. Carolina and Company live weekdays on ABC 15. A fun show that makes you laugh and makes you feel good about where you live.
If you just moved to the area, Carolina and Company Live is the show you need to watch. You'll find out about everything going on along the Grand Strand, Feedy, and Border Belt. Check it out weekdays at noon on WPDE ABC 15. Thanks so much for being with us today. Don't forget, Carolina and Company Live will be back again tomorrow at noon. If you miss us, go to our website. Check it out. Uh, today's show will be on there by tomorrow, so you can always keep up. If you miss something, you can always check it out on our website. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow. Amanda will be back tomorrow, I hope, and we'll have another great show. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Carolina and Company Live is sponsored by the businesses, organizations, and groups featured in this program. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of WPDE ABC 15, WWMB CW 21, or its employees.